233, little is much when God is in it, on that first verse. In the heart of the spirit I write then, there's a word for all to do. Heart the voice of God is calling to the heart is calling. so much you can be seated and it's a joy to see I spent time this afternoon uh, this morning actually uh, just praying thinking prayed this afternoon as well but praying thinking about what everybody was doing at that time and then just thinking about this evening service and uh, trust it's going to be a blessing I'm teaching again about government everybody's favorite subject I know that but I thought well Lord please make it interesting anyways and then make it a wonderful time to be in church together and uh, so I know the days have gone everywhere uh, from the beginning. Some of you have been at work and doing these different things. Some of you are retired. But my father-in-law used to say that uh, he felt like he needed to go back to his workplace when he retired because he got more rest there than he did uh, after he got retired because everybody had jobs for him after he got retired. So maybe you're working harder now than you used to. But uh, we'll have a, we're, we're thankful regardless of your uh, activities today. I'm glad that you're here. And um, so we are looking forward to a good time. We'll have a Bible study in just a little bit. We'll sing a little bit more. We'll have a missionary video. And uh, then if you'll give Amy and I a little bit of chance at the end, we'll meet you in the lobby. And um, we've got some um, uh, York peppermint patties for everybody. So that'll be a bright spot in your day. Even if nothing else has gone right, uh, then we've got something for you. Uh, we did get the little ones. We're cheapskates, but we got some. So uh, you come find us afterwards. And the kids shouldn't have all the fun, so we'll give a little bit in here as well. So thank you for being in church tonight. And uh, let's do this. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessings on the service, and then I'm going to go over uh, the, our prayer request, then we'll have our prayer time, but you can't pray too much. And uh, so as we pray, you pray, and uh, maybe it's that you just rolled in here uh, on two wheels, and you've been uh, going, going, going all day, and you just need this time just to say, well, Lord, help me slow down a little bit, and let me get what you have for us. And if that's what this time is needed for, then let's take care of business there as well. Father, we're grateful. And Lord, we're thankful for how good you are to us. And dear Lord, we're very grateful for how much you love us, what you give us, what you do for us, the avenue of prayer. We're thankful for the time to gather tonight. Lord, perhaps we ran in here fast after a hard day. Maybe some didn't even get supper. 
Maybe we've had a leisurely day, but our mind's still going about some of the things that we wanted to get done even though we were off. So, Lord, all of us are different. But I pray that you'd make this time a profitable evening. I pray that, Lord, the, the message, the lesson would be profitable, dear Lord. I pray as we get into the Word of God, it would minister to us. Lord, even if we don't need the subject matter covered, just getting into the Word, may it help us, dear Lord. And I pray that you would bless our singing, and I pray that you bless our missionaries that we'll hear a little bit about on video. And I pray that everything that's done would be a glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me go over a few prayer requests. You've got your um, blue sheet that, you've, uh, that you received on the way in, and uh, we're praying for uh, attendees with, uh, with some upcoming surgeries and procedures. Uh, there on the left-hand side, we're praying for those in recovery that have had some surgery in, as of late, but once you keep them lift up in prayer, and then also Bob Smith uh, will have a, a cardioversion tomorrow on his heart, so keep him in your prayers. Sheila Ball will have a surgery on her wrist tomorrow, and uh, keep her in your prayers. Angela Moore will have a surgery the next day, and Miss Brenda Vickers having some health uh, testing or, and procedures going on, so please keep her in your prayers. Uh, Miss Debbie Deacons uh, was supposed to have some uh, some shots and some different things today, but they postponed that uh, till the 16th, so please keep her in your prayers, battling arthritis and different issues going on, so please keep uh, praying for her. And then, of course, down below that, uh, we're praying for Mickey Archer and uh, Miss Edith Rourke and uh, Johnny Saylor and Pat Scalf, Debbie Mullins and Tom Morris. Many of these are right here with us, and we're just lifting these brothers and sisters up in Christ. Debbie Deacon's there. Carrie Abbott, our missionary, who we got reacquainted with last Saturday, Sunday night. H.B. Lawson and Miss Salazar and Miss Donna Pruitt, David's wife, uh, is also battling cancer. We waited for just a little while to announce that, so please keep her in your prayers. And uh, then we're praying for Lynn Anderson and Joel Johnson and Jan Saylor and Pat Shaw. Uh, so good to see Miss Pat Shaw the other night here at church. And, uh, but uh, keep her in your prayers. Sharon Pritchard, um, <coughs> excuse me, asking the Lord to bless in a special way Dar Darlene McEwen. Caleb and Abby Foran, and Miss Lois Hauser, and uh, Kermit Deacons, and uh, Sherry Edens. Uh, continue to pray for her. Our church got a card thanking uh, us for her prayers. And so, really, people just need our support in prayer. And Victoria Tarbox and Virgil Stout, uh, just keep him in your prayers if you would, please. And so, we've got a lot of folks that we're praying for that have either had health issues, uh, some procedures, or going through some soon. So, just keep lifting them up in prayer. Praying for the three and four year olds. Uh, John and Stephanie Rourke and Jean Haynes as they uh, take care of those. And so I want you to keep them lifted up in prayer. They do a great job. And uh, we're certainly keeping uh, the Lord's blessings on there and praying about that. Praying for Brother Rick Payne and all the ones that help with the safety crew. Many times you don't see them, maybe when you're leaving or coming. But thank the Lord for them. Of course we do. But uh, also sometimes things will happen out in the parking lot or out on the sidewalks or sometimes doesn't even get in the building or sometimes it does, but they take care of it quick just like that. And we thank God for his safety. But uh, also sometimes somebody will take a fall or they'll have an issue out there and uh, that team is on it just as quick as can be. And so I thank the Lord for them. You keep them in prayer. Praying for Brother Kyle and Anna Snyder, our uh, youth uh, student pastor and his wife, and uh, asking the Lord to bless them and praying for Danny Jenkins and Miss Shirley and uh, praying for them as deacon in their role. So uh, then also praying for our bus ministry, praying for Doug, De Doug Deacons, Isaac and Cora Wampler and Jordan Wheelock on bus number four. Just keep lifting them up in prayer. And, um, and then we're just uh, praying for Hannah as they I believe she helps on that one. Or one. We're praying for all the ones that help on the buses. So please keep lifting them up in prayer. Praying for our missionaries, Brother uh, Philip and Sarah Pritchard and um, TJ and, and Tamala Tilly. And uh, praying for the Muldoons, the ones we just took on recently, uh, going to go plant deaf churches in Romania. And uh, so we're certainly asking the Lord to bless. And then our video tonight will be about the Vallas family uh, and the Turks in Caicos Islands since 2017. And so we're continuing to pray there. And don't forget to pray for Sarah Roten, that the Lord will just continue to um, uh, bless her. A lot of 
her team over there, uh, where she's at, uh, has um, in Uganda had um, had gotten COVID, but she has not. Last I heard, so keep her in prayer, and uh, so just we just need to l- keep lifting her up that the Lord would strengthen her. And praying for our shut-ins, Miss Levita Bustle, the one we're praying for specifically for tonight, Miss Corky DeBusk, and uh, just asking the Lord to strengthen her down at the in Jonesboro at the Four Oaks. And so we've got so many to pray for. Praying for Brent Scroggs and Matthew Hayes. Uh, of course, for the uh, in the military, and uh, as they continue to serve there, and uh, then of course we're praying for Brent because he just got married, and Amber up here, Miss the new Mrs. Scroggs over here. In case you haven't congratulated her, and I'm sure she appreciates me pointing her out. So um, it's just a little ministry I have, Amber. So. Um, and then praying for our governor of officials as we, as we roll through them, Robert Holloway, Jr., the Court of Criminal Appeals, and Steve Light, a county commissioner. And so we've got many things to pray for, and uh, there are others that are on some of our different lists, but those are the ones we're praying for. I want you to pray for this Sunday that the Lord would meet with us in a special way, that uh, He would bless our time together, He would save people if they're not saved, be it in this room or any of the rooms around here, and uh, that He would have His will in His way. We had a lot of visitors, a lot of guests with us this past Sunday, and uh, we are reaching out to them this week and trying to minister to them in the appropriate way, but we're praying they would come back and be with us on Sunday, and uh, I want you to pray along with us on that. Perhaps you have a prayer request that's unspoken, but you'd like to lift you up your hand and say, I've got something heavy on my heart tonight. Would you lift your hand up? The Lord knows those right now. I believe with all of my heart He sees those. We'll pray together for those. Well, here's how we'll do it. Um, uh, we're going to have the ladies play on the organ, and uh, as she plays softly through, we'll just go over these prayer requests that you've got, others on your heart, and uh, then here in just a few moments, Brother Dan will come up and close this part of the service in prayer, and uh, then he'll introduce the video as well, and we'll move on with the service. But let's spend some time in an old-fashioned prayer meeting. Let's just pray about these needs. Let's pray together.
Lord, as the song says, I need you. Every minute of every hour of every day of every month of every year all my life I've needed you and I need you now Lord we thank you for answered prayer we thank you for the praises that we've heard about this week we thank you for Lord those that have come through surgeries that are now recovering we pray for those that are facing surgeries. Lord, we lift them up tonight, trusting you and resting in the fact that you know what's best for each and every one of us. Every situation that we might be going through, every burden that we might have, every unspoken request, Lord, you know our hearts, and we thank you for that. So we trust you, and we ask that your will be done in each and every prayer request, each and every situation, in each and every life. Lord, I pray that you'd be with the remainder of the service this evening. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you'll touch our pastor as he preaches. Lord, as you said, your word would never return void, so we thank you for that tonight. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. At this time, we'll watch a video from our missionary Paul and Amy Vallis in the Turks and Caicos Islands. About a year ago, I drove up to a house that had been donated to our church. Bushes and vines had seemingly swallowed the property. The bush, the bush was, was so, so thick, th you could only see up to a couple feet away. Some of our church people thought the house was deteriorating as well, and they thought it should be torn down. I asked a few of our church people to help clean up the property. The more bush we cut back, it seemed, the more debris we found. Old boats, cars, engines, even 20-foot-long containers, all rusting away. It took us several months to clean it all up. Finally, we could see the house unobstructed. The house did look like it was falling apart, but just to make sure, we invited some local contractors to inspect the house and give their professional opinion. They came to the conclusion that there is not much structural damage to the house. Trinity Baptist Church immediately voted to start raising funds for the renovation project. Through the generous giving of God's people, both here and in the States, we've raised enough funds to purchase windows, build a septic tank, complete the exterior and interior construction work, and repair the roof. Though there is still much work that needs to be done, the Lord graciously allowed us to move in on February 28, 2022. God answers prayer. We still need to purchase items such as kitchen cabinets, tile for the bedrooms, furniture, and even paint. Right now, Amy's kitchen counter consists of cinder blocks holding up a piece of plywood. But we continue to trust God to finish providing the funds as he has already proven himself both capable and faithful. The church continues to grow in Christ. We continue holding two Sunday morning services one English and the other Creole. We've had many visitors come for both services. Haitians tell me I am no longer learning Creole. I have learned it. Praise the Lord for allowing me to come this far in my language studies. Amy's Sunday school class has roughly 15 students, ranging from one year old, our son Caleb, up to 12 years old. People are getting saved, but many of them have moved to other islands to find work. Right now I'm discipling two people and one of them will soon be leaving to go to college. Many of our people are also Haitians. They have come to Turks and Caicos to find work, not necessarily to serve in church. Please pray that God would work in their hearts to serve. So far, most seem content that their pastor does almost all the work, though there is one Haitian who faithfully drives the bus for me, and we praise the Lord often for him. We have very few Turks and Caicos Islanders who attend our church. We're praying for more to come and be saved. Talking with the pastors on the other islands, they have the exact same problem we're facing. The church people are content to let the pastor do everything. Please pray for laborers and please pray for us. Thank you again for your faithful prayers over the years and your faithful support as well. Until next time, the Vallis family. In 29, 229 in your hymn book, Wonderful Peace on that first verse.
May there ring a melody, and I thank the Lord for that. Thank you for singing tonight. Thank you for being here uh, once again, I tell you. And we'll look into the uh, function of human government. We looked briefly at it last week about human government, and uh, we will look at it tonight, and I trust that as we get into the Scriptures, it'll be a blessing to you. We'll start off with Romans chapter 13. As we begin in Romans chapter 13, we'll read a few verses there and then move around a little bit as your sheet, if you're, feeling, if you're looking at that, we'll go through the passages that are listed on that sheet. So Romans chapter 13 is a verse that we looked, or a section rather, that I believe we looked at a little bit last week, but uh, we'll look at it again briefly tonight. Romans 13 verse 1, the Bible says this, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, those authorities for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For is the, he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth the sword, not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. As we get started, I show you in verse number one, there's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. And this is not in my notes, but I just always like to uh, reiterate it to people that have children, grandchildren. You're involved in raising somebody. You do yourself no good when you tear down the other authorities that are in that person's life. Let's say, for instance, let's say for instance uh, they go to school and they have a teacher. And if that parent is always tearing down that teacher, they are not helping their cause out one bit. Now, please don't misunderstand that. If the teacher's doing something wrong, you make a beeline for that teacher and you go say, hey, my kids, this isn't going to happen. I, I'm, I'm, we're all for parental authority. But for you to, on a regular nightly basis, weekly basis, just tear down, I don't, can't understand why the teacher would do that. I don't understand that. That's not right. They shouldn't have done that because all you're doing is tearing down that person, that teacher, that authority in that child's eyes. And for one reason, the main reason, the Scripture says there's no power but of God. God sets people up and puts them down so that the Lord has allowed them to be in that child of yours life. But here it is on a more practical sense. Uh, or another sense that is very practical, and that is that that child's going to need that teacher. And that teacher is going to be a great help to that student. It, or it could be a policeman, a pastor, a, uh, just name them, whoever, a boss, whatever. That person in authority, that teacher, is going to be able to give something that at that particular time you're not able to give. Maybe because the kid won't look at you in the same way because your mom, your dad, whatever. But that teacher is going to come in a different role and they're going to be able to do something in that kid's life unless you've tore them down to the, if, to the degree that now they have no respect for that person. Then that lesson that that teacher or whoever it is gives, then that kid's like, Psh, is going to blow it off because that's what you've been doing all along the way. So... That one was free. That wasn't even in my notes. You're such a blessed crowd. I know that you're appreciative of that. But it is a very true thing. And I've seen, as I was in the children's ministry for many, many years, um, and, the, and the helped in the school a little bit, that uh, that happens again and again. It's a track, trap that we get into. And uh, because we just lob out some insults and some different things, and uh, we really don't help our cause, we hurt our cause. But... We're looking tonight at uh, the f function of human government. As we looked here in Romans chapter 13, we see that God sets up these powers as He will. They're of God. So those people that uh, maybe we don't always pay the respect that we ought to, that's why we put on our prayer list some of our government officials. We pray through the list of them because we believe that God has put them in there. You say, that wicked person, somebody, so-and-so, God's allowed them to be set up. And you read the Old Testament, God used ungodly kings. He would move them like, pond, or like chess pieces on a board. And uh, do they always do right? No, but when God wants them moved out, He will move them out. But until He does, He commands us to have honor and respect toward them. So we're looking tonight at those people that are set up by 
God. The powers that be are ordained of God, as we mentioned last week. So we're looking here at the first part. We're looking at the function, though, that they give, the functions that they give as we look at tonight. The first one will be, if you turn to Acts chapter 21, we'll look at the the function of protection. This is what God has given them for, and I'm going to Get a little ahead of myself here on my notes. I'll give it to you in just a moment. But when you get to Acts chapter 21, verse number 27, we're going to see where Paul, the Apostle Paul, gets arrested. When seven days were almost ended, you'll catch up there in verse number 27 of Acts 21. When the seven days were almost ended, the Jews were of Asia. When they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people, and they laid hands on him. Now we're verse 28. Crying out, men of Israel, help. This is the man that teacheth all the men that everywhere against the people and the law in this place. And further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. So they're getting, Paul, they're getting the people all riled, riled up about it. Look over in verse 31. And they went about to kill him. Tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. They stopped that. Then the chief captain came near and took him away and commanded him to be bound with two chains. And then they hauled him off and arrested him there. But I'm seeing here the first function that's listed in the scriptures anyways is protection. God's put us in this way, that, or put the government in that way for protection. Even in the setting of Garden of Eden, it pro- we proved our need because we think about, well, boy, if I only had a better situation. We always think that. If I only had more money, if I only had more resources, if I only had this, or if I only had this, or if I only had the other. Well, Adam and Eve were in perfect sp- setting. And what'd they do with it? You'd be like that one fellow said, well... You know, uh, Eve came to Adam all kinds of times, said, is there, is, are you sure you really, 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 really love me? And Adam, that suave guy that he was, he said, who else? <laughs> there was nobody else. That was, who else? Sorry, folks, it's Wednesday night. You got to loosen up a little bit, okay? And uh, you remember the story when one of those boys, Seth, you know, somebody said, Dad, why aren't we still in the garden? He said, well, your mom made us out of house and home, so we, here we are. So, Adam and Eve didn't do so well in that perfect setting. And to be honest with you, neither would we. But we proved our need in the Garden of Eden. And so it only stands to reason, as the population grew, that the problems were just going to multiply and so it wasn't an afterthought that God said, well, we're going to have to give a government here. God, in the trinity of, of, God, of the Godhead, they don't talk back or didn't talk back and forth. They said, well, looks like they messed up to the point. Now we're going to have to send a Savior, Jesus Christ, and we're going to have to send government. God knew all along what he was going to do. And so we proved it, though, in the Garden of Eden that we proved our need. Let me think about this. If you look back in Genesis 1 and look at what God commanded us to do, and I try not to... Stay off, of, stay off track very long. But look at verse number 28. God blessed them and God said unto them, are you there, Genesis 1, first book, uh, first chapter. He said unto them, be fruitful, multiply. We know all that. Replenish the earth. <laughs> the one fellow had this, all this. Uh, had, a person came through, had bukus of kids. And, and he said, well, you know, the Bible says replenish the earth. He said, yeah, but he didn't give that to you as a single command. Every, other people are going to help out on that. You didn't have to help with your 19 and counting or whatever the, you know, Replenish the earth, and look at the next phrase, and subdue it, and have dominion over it. So to subdue what? And have dominion over it? Well, have, a, have dominion over the fish, the sea, and the, over all that, but subdue it, and subdue what? Subdue the earth. So it's not a command right there, but it stands a reason. It's not, it doesn't take very much logical uh, deduction to figure out if we're going to subdue it or we're going to have to keep it in, in, t- in check as the population grew and all of the world was there in that known part for a long time. Even in the New Testament, it was much more centrally located as far as the population mass, but then it was going to grow and grow and grow till now we have people around the world. And so God knew that he was going to have to pa- have government to protect the citizens of that group. Because you say, well, wouldn't it be great if just everybody was kind to each other? I take you back to Garden of Eden when there's only four or five of them. Cain killed Abel. 
And so we realized that it didn't take that population very long to get to a place where people were going to use force against another. And there's where you come out in the Old Testament where the laws were put. If this person does this, an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, and all that. And, and those laws were put into place to what to do with people when they mistreated others. So the function of protection so we see that uh, the restraint is given to protect citizens. And who's, who's, who, are, who are the government supposed to protect us from? Well, they're supposed to protect us from each other. <laughs> Sometimes you think that's getting so big, uh, protect us from it. But that's another story. But the function of protection. So we see that. Number two, we see the function is given of punishment. Look back in Romans chapter 13 where we already were. I should have had you hold your place, but it says there in the end verses of the ones we read, verse 3 and 4, it talks about the function of punishment. The function of punishment is listed out there because God says that these people, they don't bear the sword in vain, meaning it's not useless, it's not um, just some show that they're putting on. The Bible says, I'll read this to you in 1 Peter, and then we'll come back to Romans 13. 1 Peter chapter 2, though, says this, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be the king is supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him, listen to this, for the punishment of evildoers. So God was putting his hand of blessing, his to let these people of, uh, that Peter was writing, used of God to write to, said, listen, God's given those governors or those that are supreme, uh, God has sent them for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So there's a function that they have, and that function is punishment. Verse number four, 3 and 4 of Romans 13. For rulers are not a terror to good works. My brother's a policeman. I love, I love police officers. Sometimes they'll sit out here on the parking lot and they'll do the reports and all the police officers, I feel bad for them. They've got to write more reports than we, anybody can shake a stick at for all of the whatever they do because they've got to justify themselves and, and all that. But we oftentimes, every time if we can, but we oftentimes will go out and offer if they want some water or Cokes or something because we love for them to sit out here. It's, it's great for business here because that keeps some, the, unrow, the rowdy people from coming around. But then we also want them to know that we thank God for them. I tell them we pray for you. We love you having you here and uh, anything that we can do for you because I love them. Well, now if you're going too fast down the interstate, I know you don't want to see them right then, but... That's listed in this verse too. You're this to happen to be the one that, that talks about here in verse number three. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. <laughs> the people are going 85 in a 70 mile an hour zone or a 60 mile an hour zone. That's a little bit of a terror at that point. They're not a terror to good works, but to the evil. And so we see that the function of punishment is lifted out or, or dished out. But government's not a, th a threat to those that are living right. I, I just have to ask. Even if you are going the speed limit, going up I-26, do you still tap the brakes when you see one of those troopers sitting beside there? Even if you're going right the speed limit, and you still do, it's just habit, so I'm glad I'm not alone. So we see, though, the function of punishment. And, uh, but then over in First Peter that I read, we see the contrast that's between punishment and praise is contrasted back and forth because he says it's sent for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Now listen, I understand that we're in a different age, but we shouldn't be different than what we were ever. When I was growing up, and it's still great lessons for our kids to learn now, your grandkids, whoever, if we were taught that if you ever needed something, you're in town, of course we lived out of town, but if you're in town, you need something, you can't figure out what to do, just ask a policeman. They'll always help you. And I know there's a few of them, just like there's a few preachers that really are a disgrace to their profession. But by and large, they are both professions or, or pretty good people that will help you out. And that's where the Scripture says, and it's for the praise of them that do well. That government up there truly is for the fear of those that are doing wrong, but for the praise of those that are doing right. So we see the function of punishment that's dished out. Now let me show you the last one, the function of promotion. If you'd see in 1 Timothy chapter number 2, find any of the books that start with T, you'll find all of them if you find one of them. 1 Timothy chapter 2, the Bible says in verse number 1, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men. Do it for everybody. 
But then he specifically lists those, lists those that, are list, uh, that, are in, that are shown in verse number 2. For kings, for authorities, for the president, for the leaders, all that. And all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So what I'm talking about in promotion is this. Function, the government, function of government is not only for protection. Yes, protect those people who need protection. Punish those people that need to be punished. But then also to promote good welfare and to promote folks to go forward in living their life. We live, I'm, I'm, well, I know we're biased, but we live in the greatest nation on earth and our government is supposed to function in the way that it propo- promotes people uh, living in the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as we're going about serving our God, praising our God, raising our families, doing our businesses, uh, or, or starting our businesses and flourishing and helping other folks. That's what government is supposed to push forward. Let me give you this. President Grover Cleveland was asked. He was continually vetoing uh, legislation that was more progressive in nature. And he rejected again and again many bills that promised something to the citizens from the government. And he asked this very thought-provoking question. He says, if government provides for the people, who's going to provide for the government? (laughs) Which is the age-old question. uh, All of the social programs that get dished out, they don't get free that they don't come free. They got to be paid for by somebody and maybe by our children's 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 children. But we understand that, or I'm saying this, and I'm going veering away from the Bible, but all of us know this is true, that um, our government has branched out into so many different ways that was never, never spelled out in Scripture, but then also never spelled out in the founding of our nation. There was only very, and most of you know, you're students of history, there was only just a few jobs that government was supposed to have. And we have taken on multiplied thousands of others. And did you ever notice that the, we as, as a people, as a government, we always do an ineffective job, but we charge more than any other business could? <laughs> So however that comforts us, I'm not sure. But that seems to be the way we do. We do a bad job, but we charge you a lot for it. So if that, however that works. But I'm saying that the function of promotion, promote the general, general welfare of its citizens to pun, be, a, be a force of punishment for those that do wrong, but then a, a, a source of protection. And so you can promote this and go forward in, in life. The life that we're trying to live at the end of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, is that quiet and peaceable life. Christian family should be happy to serve their God, love each other and their family, raise, and if God raises them to be a wealthy, wealthy family or God lets them own a, uh, have a meager existence but be happy, either one God puts into their household, just thank God for it and go on. But our government, if it does its job, is the function of promoting that life that you can live. And I believe we certainly do have much of that. So we see that God has given this function of human government. Now, here's what I want to challenge you with as we leave. We should not let the abuses that come take us further than God says we ought to be. Let me explain what I mean by that. We've seen it laid out, and I think if you take these verses and the ones from last week, you would see that certainly God does ordain a government of some sort. But we look at this and say, yes, but they are such overreach now and there's such extra layers of bureaucracy and there's extra layers of taxes and there's extra layers of helps, some of which are just ungodly and I don't even like, and I'm with you on all of that stuff. But we don't want to be so put off by the abuses that we go to an unhealthy level on the other side and we say, I just don't want any of it. Because that would be much like I talked about before if you looked at a police officer and we've had some of that in our nation here in the, in the last years and that is that, well, there's been some abuses here and so we're just going to abolish. I'm thinking, are you, or, how, how, how could we even function? And the same is true with ministers, with preachers. There are some that are just uh, should be taken out of the pulpit, never to be allowed to return. But I hope that everybody doesn't say, see, there are some of those pastors that have been, a, that have been abusive, and so we're not going to listen to any of them. Don't, as they say, throw the baby out with the bathwater. 
And so I'm saying that just because abuses have happened and we've overreached and we've done all these things, don't go so far the other way that you pass God's Word on that direction. Let's just let God's Word stand, and where it stands, it stands authoritatively. Father, bless us now as our prayer. I hope, dear Lord, and I pray that we would line up with your word, even in this somewhat mundane subject. And Lord, I try not to, um, I certainly don't want to question your word. I certainly would have loved to have preached a more exciting subject. But Lord, some of these ones that are just bottom shelf, bland, mundane, Lord, they're in your word as well. So I pray that the people would receive it in that fashion, that, Lord, it's all your word, and we need to preach it just like we need to preach the ones that are making a shout and, and swing from the chandeliers. Lord, I pray that you'd bless us. Help us to be balanced Christians. Lord, help us to be honoring to these officers and to our government officials and all of these folks here, Lord. We honor their position even when their lifestyle we can't agree with. So help us to be right in that. Help us to be biblical in that, I pray, and we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Here's the invitation. It's hard to give an invitation after that, as you might imagine, but here it is. Maybe we'll take this time and pray for our government. Pray that God would root out some of those ones that are ungodly and put in some that are righteous. And then maybe somebody in this room would say, well, not only do I want him to put in somebody that's righteous, I believe I want him to put me in. If he would, and if God leads you to get in uh, one of these races, then you go, go, go for it and, and honor God in all that he leads you to do. But I know we all can all pledge to do this, that we can pledge to respect and honor those people just like the Word of God says. And I challenge you to do that. And if you're here tonight... And uh, maybe that your attitude's been a little sideways about that. Again, don't let the abuses of a few keep us from being biblical in our outlook on life. Father, bless us now as our prayer, and we'll thank you for all that you do. And Lord, as I lead the folks in prayer, Lord, I pray that you would bless our government officials. Lord, many of them are wicked. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would remove those. There are so many of them. Lord, I pray that you'd raise up some righteousness in these seats. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would pave the way for some people who would have a biblical foundation and a biblical worldview to get into the offices so that they could make some real change. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us have the right attitude toward all of them, even the wicked ones, dear Lord. Help us respect their office even though we can't their lifestyle in Jesus' name. Would you stand together as the ladies play something through? I challenge you to pray. Pray for our government officials. Pray that the Lord would have His way. Have, pray that the Lord would lead them and lead the right people in those positions. And then tonight, perhaps you slipped in amongst us and you say, I'm confused. I didn't hear about Jesus Christ. Well, that wasn't my theme. But can I tell you what this church stands on? That Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. If you're here tonight or watching via live stream, let me just give you this quick word. Jesus Christ came to this earth and died on the cross for your sins and my sins so that we could have a heavenly home. Home's such a wonderful thing. And He wants you to have a heavenly home, but your lifestyle and my lifestyle, regardless of how good we may look compared to other people, our lifestyles have kept us out of heaven, will keep us out of heaven because we can't get there on our own merit. But Jesus died for you and me, was buried and rose again so that we could go to heaven, spend forever with Him. And if you're not sure that you're saved, I invite you to come down to the front and I'd meet you here with my Bible and show you how you can be sure that heaven is your home. Home's a beautiful word. As they play one more verse, would you come?
Thank you so much. You may look this way, and uh, what a joy to be back in church tonight. And as I mentioned, um, I'm going to get back to the lobby, and I want to greet as many of you as I can. And uh, Amy, if you want to head on back there, those are under the well, guest services, and um, I hope they are. Check our ushers and make sure they didn't get into them first. But uh, Brother Marty, would you come dismiss us in prayer? While he's praying, I'm going to slip back to the back. And uh, if you didn't come to church for any other reason, you get a York peppermint patty. So praise the Lord. So pray for us. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to be gathered in your house, Lord. I pray that you'll just uh, help us to go forth and uh, to live for you and live life as pleasing to you. Thank you, Lord, for the government you've set up. Pray, Lord, you'll help us to honor it in a way that pleases you. Pray, Lord, that you'll just guide and direct us in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm-hmm.